Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this lesson, we're going to talk about short code templates. Now, short codes are basically like little pieces of code that you can put inside your markdown files so you don't have to write ugly HTML and also so you can use them across a bunch of different files. If you're familiar with partials and partial templates in Hugo, short codes are essentially partial templates, but instead of using them inside this layouts folder, we're gonna use them inside this content folder in markdown file. We can use a short code inside this markdown file to insert some you know, piece of code that was specified somewhere else. So let's just kind of dive in and, and we'll look at creating your own custom short code. And the way that you do that is you come over here over to the layouts folder and we're gonna make a new folder inside of here and we're just gonna call it short codes. And you need to make sure that it's spelled exactly like this, including the capitalization. And inside the short codes folder, we will make a file and let's just call it my short code, okay? And you can name this uh, whatever you want and it needs to be an HTML file. So in here in my short code, let's just put this is the short code text, okay? And this is like the most basic version of a short code that we can have, okay? So just to recap, inside of this short codes folder, we have our short code file. Now, let's go over to this content folder and I have one piece of content here, it's called a.markdown, it just has a little bit of text here. And so below this text, I want to insert the short code that I just created. And the way that you do that is by coming over here, we can do open and close curly bracket and we wanna type out the name of the short code. Now, the name of the short code is just gonna be the name of the file that you created, but without the .html extension. So it's gonna look something like this, uh, my short code, okay? And you need these less than and these greater than signs as well. So let's have a look over at our web browser and we'll see what this looks like. And you can see here that we have the text that was in the a.markdown file, but then we also have the short code, right? So all the short code was was just this short code text, and you can see that it was included inside of this file. So there's a couple other things we can do with short codes to sort of make them uh, more powerful. And one thing we can do is pass in variables. And so I can pass in a variable or really any number of variables into this short code uh, that the short code can use. So let's pass a, a variable in here and we'll just call it color. And I'm gonna pass in blue, okay, just like that. And so now let's go back over to our short code file. And the way that we can access those variables that we pass in is by using this dot get function, okay? So I can type dot get and then in parentheses, I can type the name of the parameter that I want to get. So in my case, it's going to be color, right? So I could have, uh, let's say like a paragraph and inside of here, um, we can use this color variable that we passed in to style it. So I can say um, color is equal to this. Now. Here's something that I wanna bring up and I, I purposely put this inside the style tags because when you're using this dot get and you wanna access a parameter by its name, you have to use these quotation marks. But the problem is if you're using CSS as well, you can't use these quotation marks um, inside of here. And so when you're inside of uh, something like this, you wanna use this little symbol right here. And this is usually right above the left tab key on your computer. And if you use this, it'll act as a double quotes um, for something like this. That's just a problem that I've run into while using this framework. So um, that'll kind of help you out. And so I can just say this is the framework text. And now this text should be colored with the color that we passed in. So let's check this out over here and I'll refresh the page and you'll see that uh, this is now in blue, right? So I could pass in any color uh, into there. Now, in addition to passing in a parameter like this, so in this case, we passed in uh, this parameter where we had this name and we set it equal to something, I can also pass in what's called a positional parameter. So instead of having to type out color is equal to blue, I could just type out blue here and I can head over to my short code file and inside of here, instead of saying dot get color, I can just say dot get zero. And so what this is gonna do is instead of, you know, looking for a variable called color, it's just gonna grab 
whatever the first variable that was passed into this is. So in our case, it's gonna be that blue. And so you'll see that this shouldn't change, right? It's, it's gonna stay the same. Um, so the, those are the two basic ways that you can pass uh, parameters into a shortcode with positional and with uh, a named parameter. And, you know, both have their pros and their cons. Obviously, like depending on the situation, you can use whichever one you need to use. So that's a basic overview of what uh, I would call a single tag shortcode. And so a single tag shortcode is just a shortcode that has one tag, right? That makes sense. But if we want to make our shortcodes more complex, we can make them doubly tagged, right? So I could make another tag down here and this would act as an ending tag. So sometimes when you're writing these markdown files, you might want to encapsulate a bunch of text into a shortcode, right? In other words, I might wanna pass in like two or three of the paragraphs in my markdown file into this shortcode. So I'm gonna type out like this is the text inside the shortcode tags, right? And now let's head over to our, whoops, let's head over to our shortcode file and I'm gonna get rid of this stuff. And if I wanna access the text that's inside of the tags from this shortcode, all I have to do is type out dot inner. And dot inner is a variable that uh, contains all of the text that's inside of the tag. So when we come back over here, you're gonna see that this prints out the text that was inside of those tags. And so this is, is useful because I can do a bunch of different stuff in here. So for example, like in this shortcode file, you know, I can maybe put this stuff into like a paragraph and, um, you know, have it be like a different color. So I could say like style and, you know, maybe we'll set the color equal to red or something, right? Or even better, why don't we set the background color equal to whoops, yellow. And so in essence, this is gonna be like highlighting this text. So um, if we save this, you'll see that this text gets highlighted. So you could actually use this as a highlighter, right? So I could say like, this is not highlighted text. And we could surround it on both sides. And then you'll see that like only the text that's inside of this short code gets highlighted. Um, and so this can be kind of useful. You know, you can, I'm sure you could think of like a bunch of different ways that you could use uh, these short codes to do things. Um, here's one more note that I want to make about these uh, doubly tag short codes is um, something that has to do with markdown. So let's say that inside my double tag short codes, I wanted to include some markdown syntax. Uh, so let's say I wanted to have some like bold text, right? And the way that you make text bold and markdown is with uh, oops, double stars. So let's see what happens. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my web browser and what should pop up here is bold text. But actually what you'll notice is that none of the markdown got rendered, okay? And that's because inside of this short code, it's not looking to render the text, it's just looking to um, you know, basically encapsulated into the shortcode. If you have markdown inside of your shortcodes and you want it to get rendered, instead of having these less than and greater than signs, you can just put percent signs. Um, and those need to go on both of these tags. And so now when we save this file and we go over to our web browser, you'll see that the text is bold now, okay? And so that's sort of a basic overview of shortcodes. You know, these are super powerful and they really make your website more modular. I'm sure you can think of a bunch of different ways to use them. So yeah, enjoy using shortcodes. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve. So if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.